In this video, we will decipher all of the different cool form stuff that we can do with jQuery Mobile. So mostly it's going to be somewhat the same. However, when we apply these elements, jQuery Mobile will change them into something that's a little bit more friendly to mobile users. So for example, rather than the tiny checkbox for an input type of checkbox, jQuery Mobile will turn it into something much larger so that it can actually be touched with a touch phone. All right, so let's go. Here is our boilerplate again, and let's begin. The first step, of course, is to create our wrapping form. So we'll give it an action, and we're not directing anywhere. We're not building a fully functioning form, so we'll just do that to itself. And then the method will be get or post. That's fine. Okay, so now within here, uh, there's a couple rules we need to know. You need to wrap Generally, you need to wrap your labels and your inputs within a div with a data role of field contain. And I'm going to show you why in just a minute. So let's begin without doing so. And we're going to create a label. And this will be for, let's say, first name. Okay. And we'll give it a value of first name. Okay. Next, we'll give it an input. And this type will be text. And the name will be first name and the ID always good to make a name and an ID will also be first name okay so let's keep it like that and if we view it in the browser this is what we get so there's a couple things I want you to be careful of uh, first note how for mobiles when it's too small the label will be placed on top of it however for a larger screen maybe for the iPad it's going to be pushed off so keep that in mind okay next if you remove the name and the ID, watch what happens. Okay, the, the styling is going to be somewhat different. So you need to make sure you apply, especially the ID, so that jQuery Mobile can style it differently. All right, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's say we were to copy that. And just paste it in like so. It doesn't look very pretty, right? So normally within your style sheet, you might go and add some padding. However, you have this available to you already because of the jQuery Mobile style sheet. So what you want to do in these cases is wrap it. And you want to wrap it within a div with a data role of field contain. Now, technically, you should be able to use a field set, and maybe a field set would be more appropriate here. However, currently, maybe it's a bug jQuery Mobile won't uh, recognize the field contained data role on the field set element, strangely. So let's keep it like that. And now you notice here it adds some padding and it adds a horizontal rule, or at least a border below. So then when you copy it, paste now you have that nice positioning and that's because of the data role equals field contain all right so let's continue with this I'm going to change this to last name feel free to fast forward if you don't feel like watching this last name the same as well so now if we refresh we have our first name and our last name all right let's take a look at some of the other things that we can do now let's go and do uh, your age so normally if you wanted you could do a normal text input and they will enter an integer and you can use some uh, JavaScript or surf side language to determine if they did in fact type in a number however we can instead use the range input this is the new HTML5 range input so div data role equals field contain and within here we're going to give it a label and it's going to be for age and we'll give it a value of age so input type equals range and we need to apply a couple values one what is the minimum range that we're willing to accept so men we'll just set it to one and the max although men let's set it to seven they got to be seven years at least seven years old and the max will be 120. All right, let's make sure we give it the name value. And also, again, I'm going to give it an ID. So if we go back now, this is jQuery mobilified. So normally, you wouldn't have this. You would have to code this on your own. But now, as we move this up, the age will reflect that. Alternatively, I can type it in myself, and it'll automatically update. And that's the range element. So we can also use this select boxes. So let's do here, and let's do another one. Div data role equals field contain. And it looks like we have a mistake right there. There we go, that's better. All right, sorry about that. And now within here, we need to do a label, and you know, this is mostly gibberish. Let's do label for, and we'll say cars, favorite car. Now within here, we're gonna create a select box. So select, and we're gonna give an ID of car, and also a name of car. 
And within here, we're going to have a handful of options. So options, and let's do, let's say three of them. And each one is going to have a value that we're going to insert. All right, so the first one will be Honda. The next one will be Toyota. And the final one will be Ford. So save that, and if I scroll down now, what this does is when I click on it, it's much more friendly for mobile users. So if I click on it, it'll create this little dialog box, in which case I can choose the one I want. And this is all done automatically for me. I don't have to implement this functionality myself because the framework does it for me. All right, so let's do that. Uh, let's do just a couple more to give you an idea. How about uh, hobbies? So let's do it once again, div data role field contain and within here we'll just do P your hobbies and this will be a multi select so within here I'm going to do input and the type is going to be checkbox and we're going to give an ID and let's say movies name equals movies and then finally let's give it a label and this label is going to be for the movies that way there's a connection between the two and the value is going to be movies Save it, refresh. If I scroll down, now we have this option where I can choose it. Now again, I want you to be careful because if you delete these, it's going to ruin the styling. As you can see right here, it's gonna look strange. So make sure that you have this ID as well as the name. Otherwise, it's not going to render correctly. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's just add a couple more here. Yank. So we'll scroll down here and this next one is going to be sports and name here sports so label for sports and then the final one will be something we all love to do there we go Okay, and sure enough, now we have these options and they can be selected as we want and jQuery mobile will automatically style them separately when they have been selected. Okay, so we have our options, our fake form, and now let's just simply do our submit. So input data theme, let's give it a theme of B, and the type is gonna be submit, and the value is gonna be equal to submit form. Now, again, if you want it to retain the nice padding consistency that you have here, make sure that you surround it with div theta role equals theme. I'm sorry, data role equals field contain. And now if we scroll down, it'll get the extra bit of padding. But look, very, with very minimal work, all we had to do here is create the markup, and then jQuery Mobile will take care of the styling. Again, if I stretch it out, it's going to be a little bit cleaner. And when I bring it back down, they're pushed below. So now, of course, you can just submit the form like you would do with anything else, whether it's with a language like PHP or JavaScript. So I've created just a base little snippet here, but if you want, we'll do it together. And all we're going to do here is we're going to say, get the form. We'll be generic here. Assume there's only one form on the page. And when it's submitted, we'll run a function. And here, let's just begin quickly returning false just to disable that default action. Or you could say E dot prevent default. If you do that, make sure you pass E. Okay, so here, why don't we console.log using Firebug, and we're gonna get this dot serialize. And what this will do is it's going to take every element in your form, and it's going to serialize it very nicely so that you have name equals Jeffrey, and last name equals Way, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's try that out now. I'm gonna refresh the page, type in my information, Favorite car, Honda, hobbies, movies, sports, eating, that's fine. Actually, I'm not a big sports fan. Who would have thought? All right, so now if I open up Firebug, and now what you'll see here, and now this error is being caused because if we come back up, it's because we're, we have the action here. So let's change that to index.html. Refresh. Try it one more time. Yeah, Honda. There we go, submit form. And now what Serialize will do is it's gonna take the name, and apply the value, and last name equals way, and age equals 25, et cetera, et cetera. So then at that point, you can make an HX request to maybe a server-side script that'll take care of the process. So I could then do something like jQuery, uh, post this information to, we'll say server.php, and then the values we wanna pass is going to be, 
Let's get rid of this, and we're going to assign it to vals. And then we're going to pass that through it. And then if we want, we can run a callback function or something like that. And that'll receive the data, and that'll be the response of whatever you send back. And it's really as simple as that. Let's quickly go over our notes. First, you want to wrap all of your labels and your inputs within a div with a data role of field contain. And this will apply borders and nice padding. Next, you want to make sure that you use uh, an ID and the name values to make sure that jQuery Mobile picks up those styles. Otherwise, you may run into situations where it doesn't. Next, we can take advantage of the HTML5 elements. Remember, when these are being viewed on modern phones like the iPhone or BlackBerry, you can use these new elements and jQuery Mobile will take care of a fallback uh, in the cases that the phone does not allow for that. And that'll do it for this lesson. So with very little effort, we built a very cool form. You can do this very quickly and easily. So in the next lesson, we're going to begin working on our final project and we're going to mix a server-side language PHP with jQuery Mobile. So we're going to work with WordPress and we're going to build a very bare bones mobile layout and it's going to display the titles and when you click on the title, it's going to scroll over and show you the full posting in a nice mobile layout. So you can offer maybe m.yoursite.com and you can use jQuery Mobile to accomplish that. So that's what we'll do in the next lesson.